Good morning. Good morning. It is Friday, July 21st. I did check. I did check. Yes. Yeah, so good morning. And the sun is like whoop right there. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day. The uh, pole beans, I'm not sure if you can see them behind me. You can see them creeping up. They're all in bloom, so the beans will be sprouting soon. I'm in the garden, so let me just do a quick pano of the garden. Good morning, Paul and Sue, and good morning, Elaine. Good morning. Look at, look at this. Maybe I'll put this here so it's a little bit easier. Yes, I can see you better. Uh, good morning, Donna. Good morning, Karen. It's going to be a great day. So good morning. Look at those marigolds. The beauty of the earth, right? So good. So good. Velma, good, good morning. Rob, happy Friday. It's going to be a great day. Joyce, good morning. Good morning. It is so good to see y'all coming in. Doreen, good morning. Good morning. Oh, it's so good to see y'all. Daphne, it's going to be a great day. It is going to be a great day. It's look a little cool out this morning. Uh, normally when I go paddling, I'm wearing a, a shirt. And so when I came out this morning with just a t-shirt on, I was like, Woof! I always keep a blanket at the church though. Very important. Laurel and Tanya, so glad to see you this morning. So uh, this morning we're going to do some, make sure you have your thumbs ready, your fingers ready, whatever you use to type in responses. Uh, good morning, Elizabeth, uh, because we're going to do some response time this morning. Uh, because I have been memorizing uh, chapter 8 of Romans, and uh, it, it gets to this very interesting question. Uh, now, if you have memorized any sort of verses, good morning, Ken, uh, you might have memorized verse 31 of Romans chapter 8, which goes like this. If God is for us, who can be against us? It's great. But what's interesting is what's on either side of that verse, of that partial verse, which makes it so exciting. Because um, it says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? So what then shall we say to these things? What things what things is Paul talking about? And so I'm going to do my best <laughs> to tell you, recite to you Romans chapter 8. And I want you to type in those things that we receive when we become followers of Christ, when we become in Christ, right? So here we go. So you're ready, you're listening, and then you're going to type in those things that we received, right? What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? So what are those things that we have received as a result of becoming followers of Christ? This is all in chapter 8. Now, you might be saying, and I'm not sure if I've told you this, why chapter 8 of Romans? Um, I was reading this book, 100 Verses Every Christian Should Know or Memorize. Um, and in it, the, the author tells the story of Ruth Bell Graham, who was the wife of evangelist Billy Graham, and how she had memorized chapter 8 of Romans. And when she was at the bedside of one of her friends who was on, on their way to meet the Lord, she, she told him this verse, this passage. And I was like, oh, that is amazing. I want to do that. I want to memorize it so it can be there whenever I need it for such a time as this, right? So uh, 31 says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? So question is, I've primed you enough now. What are these things that we receive in Christ, right? Here we go. So there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law for God has done what the law written in the flesh oh goodness for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who set their minds on the spirit, set, but those who live according to the spirit set their uh, mind, 
that those who live according to the spirit set their mind those who ah, those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit but to set your mind on the flesh is death but to set your mind on the spirit is life and peace for those who for those who set their minds on the flesh is death but this is stressful saying this in front of all of you all uh, verse 7 is for the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God for it does not submit to God's law indeed it cannot those who are in the flesh cannot please God you however are not in the flesh but in the spirit if in fact the spirit of Christ dwells in you uh, anyone who does not have the spirit of God, of God does not belong to him. But if Christ lives in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to his mortal bodies. Therefore, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, Body, you will live for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God therefore brothers for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear but you have received the spirit of of adoptions of sons by whom we cry Abba father the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God and if children then heirs heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not are are not worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us for creation groans with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of man for uh, creation was subjected to futility not willfully but because of him who subjected it in hope that creation itself would be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God for we know that the whole creation has been groaning together with, uh, in the pains of childbirth until now. But not only creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption of sons, the, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are saved. But hope that is seen is not, saved, is not hope. For why does one still hope for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. The Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, for the, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints, right, according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that they might be the first fruits, that he might be the first fruits among many brothers. Those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Romans, and that's Romans 8, right? all from 1 to 30 and then it goes on to say what then can shall we say to these things if God is for us who can be against us right all these things look at all these things that you put up right I'm just gonna go over them all it says you said freedom freedom from the law life spirit peace freedom no condemnation peace peace righteousness inheritance children of God adopted heirs hope adoption into God's family hope redemption of our bodies the spirit intercedes for us justification justification conform to the likeness of Christ right what then can we say to these things if God is for us who can be against us he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all how much um, let me just read the rest of this it says um, he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things and i'm like what else is there right wow 
freedom, peace, justification, sanctification, hope, adoption, redemption of our bodies. Like, and if God is for us, who can be against us? And it just keeps going because the chapter's not finished yet. And I'm like, oh, Father. Right? The, the verse in uh, the YouVersion Bible app today was, He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son He loves, in whom we, ha we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And uh, the young lady who was doing the devotional this, this morning, she says, We have to remind ourselves that we have been set free from the bondage of sin, and we have been ushered passionately with grace by the king himself into his son's kingdom, the kingdom of the son he loves. And so we have to dwell on these things in chapter eight, remind ourselves of what we have been set free from, right? There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. This is good news. We need to remind ourselves the spirit himself intercedes for the saints, right? When we don't know what to pray for, he prays it. That, that's, what, that's what he wants to do. And Christ, right? We are co-heirs with Christ because we have been adopted into his family. And so what then can we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How much, uh, how much will he also give us more graciously, right? I'm, I'm still working on the rest of that, that verse, but I'm like, graciously, how much will in him graciously give us all things so that tells me there's more god is so good god is so good and we need to take these truths and we need to hold on to them and we need to set them in our hearts so when the things of this world when the when the enemy comes and he tries to discourage us and says god doesn't love you that's not true that's not true God did not spare his own son, but graciously gave us up, gave him up for us all. How much more will he not graciously give us all things, right? When the enemy says, you're not good enough here. No, no. He gave Jesus up for me. God loves me. God loves you, right? And he's working all things together, right? That's what that verse says. Verse 29, right? God is working all things together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. It's good news. It's good news. And so, my dear friends, let's hold on to chapter 8 of Romans today, right? Whenever we are tempted to, to believe those lies of the enemy that we're not good enough, that God doesn't love us, that we've, you know, messed up too much, no, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, right? Uh, therefore, brothers, and, and it says, let us hold, like, let us um, remember that we have been adopted as children of God. This is good news. Let's pray. So, Lord God, would you seal this truth in our hearts? that all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. For we did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we can cry, Abba, Father. Spirit, help us in our weakness, because we don't know how to pray for as we ought. Jesus, thank you for saving us from our sons. Thank you for from our sins. Thank you for dying on that cross to set us free. And Father, thank you for loving us so much that you sent your son. And then you have given us the spirit that we can experience the fullness of life. Help us to walk in that fullness today. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. My dear friends, this is good news. This is good news. This is good news. 
hold on to it today seal it right put it in your heart hold it in there um it's good it's good i can say lots more but i think i'm done so with this in mind with this good news in mind with this word in mind remember to like share go outside and help your community experience christ bye